Hello and welcome to another Zapier training video. Today I'm going to be talking about filters, how and when you might use them, and just give you some general tips on using filters correctly. Now if you haven't already, definitely check out my playlist. I have a load of other videos about how to use Zapier. This is going to be on the shorter side because filters are quite, uh, quite basic. And if you haven't already, please uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel so you can get new videos about Zapier and other productivity tips and tools directly to your feed. So let's talk about some filters. So as the name suggests, filters basically let you, uh, after a zap has been triggered, decide whether to run the zap or not. Because there are situations where you can trigger a zap, but maybe you don't want the zap to run in certain situations. So I'll give you an example. In this zap, it's being triggered when Calendly, uh, when a new invitee is created. That's the trigger here. That's great. However, for this particular output this particular zap that I've created here, I don't want this to run all the time. I only want it to run if that, uh, if the event type for that Calendly booking is an introductory call, because I have multiple event types in Calendly, and I only want this to run for introductory calls. And so here I've added a filter step. And to add a new filter step, I will just show you. You click plus and you add a new filter. Pretty, pretty straightforward. Let me go down to the one that I already have here. So in the filter, we can set up our conditions and you can have multiple conditions and you can specify whether you need to, the zap needs to satisfy all of the conditions or only some of them. So let's, let's have a look at that. So firstly, this is a pretty straightforward one. We only want this zap to run if the event type and in this first box, I can select the field that I want Zapier to check. So we're looking at the event event type, uh, there it is, event type name, consulting introductory call. You can see the, the test data in the light gray text here is showing consulting introductory call, that's what's come through. So that's the field that I'm asking Zapier to look at. In this second box here, I'm basically saying, what is, how do we wanna match that field? What are, we, what are we looking for? So I can look for text, you can see these first few options here are looking at text. There are some numbers, you know, numbers greater than or less than, I can check dates before or after a certain date. Or does the value just exist or not? That's quite good. Sometimes only run if a value for this field exists or does not exist. Now, something I found, by the way, with numbers here, you've only got greater than or less than, and there's no equals to. So sometimes you might have a filter where you're looking for a specific number. You can actually achieve that with the text contains or exactly matches option. Even though it's not strictly text, those uh, options will work if you're looking for a specific number. And then finally, in this box, you you type the text or the, of, or the put in the um, value of what it is that you're actually looking for. So in this case, I'm looking for the event type that contains the word introductory. Now, another way I could have done this is consulting introductory call. I could have done where the text exactly matches consulting introductory call. I could have had that here, exactly matches. I've just chosen to be a little bit more broad, contains the word introductory, that's fine. And so that's an example of a really simple filter. Here's another filter which is actually looking for multiple conditions. So this zap is being triggered when a new charge comes in via Stripe. So a new, a new credit card is uh, processed. So that's my trigger. Now I only want this zap to run in certain situations and so I have a filter here. And here's my filter. Now the conditions are um, if the description on the charge contains the word consulting. And you can see here I have multiple conditions and it says, or if the description contains the word coaching or if the description contains the word sponsorship. So in any of those situations, this zap will run. And I add those, uh, this and or, these and or conditions to the zap like this. So I just click plus or, and you can see I can add a new line here. I could click plus and, and now it adds a new line to this particular block. So you have to really think carefully about your logic sometimes. So this, this block is one set of conditions. So it could be the zap will run if this or this or both of these are satisfied. So you really have to just think carefully about the logic that you're looking for. Is it an and or situation? So in this case, it's or, but it's multiple conditions within that or kind of block. So just be really careful when thinking through your zaps. What are the conditions that might trigger this? Do I want it to run when either of the conditions run or all of the conditions are satisfied? And uh, that's it. That's all you really need to know about filters. Um, just great for either starting, uh, sorry, for stopping zaps that you don't want to have uh, to run after a certain point. You don't just have to have filters at the beginning of your zap. Sometimes you'll want to run a bunch of steps and then maybe you have a filter further down in your zap where only the final couple of steps 
continue if that filter is passed. If you do have your filter at the beginning, I'll point out as well, even though the zap is triggered, because the filter is at the start, the zap then stops at that point. And so you actually, that zap or the, the task that run, ran during that situation will not actually count towards your Zapier allowance. Obviously you get billed based on the amount of usage in your Zapier account and because no tasks have actually happened, we've only had a trigger and a filter, you actually won't get billed for anything to happen because nothing nothing has happened. So it's just a good thing to keep in mind. If you have any questions about filters, please let me know in the comments below. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next video.